Number 63, integrated concepts. Hydroelectric generators at Hoover Dam produce a maximum current of 8 times 10 to the 3 amps at 250 kilovolts. Letter A, what is the power output? All right, so this one's very straightforward. How is power related to current and voltage? Simply via the formula PIV. Power is equal to current times voltage. So the power is going to be simply uh, the, uh, the current here of 8 times 10 to the 3 amps multiplied by the voltage of 250 kilovolts. Careful, we need that in volts, so simply just take that value and multiply it by 1,000 essentially, or 10 to the third. And all we got to simply now do is plug it on in. All right, so we got 8 times 10 to the 3 multiplied by 250 times 10 to the third. And this comes out to be about 2. So this is 2 times, what's that, 10 to the 8th, ninth, maybe? Let me just check. One second. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes. Uh, so about uh, sig figs I'm not concerned about at the moment. So two this is about uh, two billion watts. All right. Now remember, a watt is simply a joule per second. So in other words, this is equivalent to two times 10 to the ninth joules per second. This is the rate of energy output of the Hoover Dam. 2.9 joules excuse me, 2 billion joules every single second, the maximum, all right? Now, letter B, it says, uh, the water that powers the generators enters and leaves the system at low speed, and thus the kinetic energy doesn't change, but it loses 160 meters in altitude. Hmm, sounds like a changing potential energy to me. How many cubic meters per second are needed, assuming an 85% efficiency? All right, so first let's tackle this 85% efficiency. What that means is that the, um, the potential energy here of the, of the water, okay, um, is being used, right? The, the, the drop in potential energy. There's a certain volume. Here, let, let, let's draw it real quick. There's a certain volume of water, okay, that is starting at some height, and then it's going to end at some other height, right? It's going to drop, okay? If you've ever been to the Hoover Dam, it's pretty amazing. As far as dams are concerned, of course. Um, so this is 160 meters, right? It loses it. So it has some potential energy up here, right? And then we'll assume that the potential energy drops to uh, zero, right? It's some reference point, okay? Now, um, if that's the case, how would I find then the potential energy at the start? Well, we know the formula, right? That's just MGH, MGH, okay? So the potential energy here will simply be then the mass. Well, do you know the mass? Well, no. So leave it alone. Times 9.8 times the height, 160. So the potential energy here, this is basically going to tell us that, so 9.8 times 160. So 1568. So I'm going to write 1568. All right. And that's in terms of M. So if you had one kilogram right, one kilogram of water dropping by that height, it would have supplied then uh, 1,568 joules of potential energy, all right? Um, you know, if it was two, then you multiply it by two, et cetera, et cetera. So now the question is, well, I need to find the mass, okay? So let's just stop there for a second on this track, and what I'm going to now, well, actually, no. Let me keep going. I was going to transition to the, the power over here, but let's keep going. So um, let's take into account now this 85% efficiency. So whatever, now this is important. So whatever this value is, not all of it, not all of the energy that is lost from this dropping, right, from this lowering of its potential energy will be transferred into powering for electricity. It's not 100% efficient. It's only 85% efficient. So what that means then is that whatever I get here, I must multiply that by 0.85 because that is the true potential energy then that will be supplied here, okay? So what I need to then do is I need to then take potential energy and multiply by 0 0.8, 0 0.85, and then times the 1568 times M. So let's just clean it up a little bit now. And that's gonna be then point times 0 0.85. So we get about 1332 uh, or 1333 with the rounding. 1333, that's good enough for now. 1330, 1333 times M. 
Okay, so as you can see, it dropped a little bit. And that's the whole point of the efficiency, that it's not 100% efficient. Okay, so now remember that this is just simply joules, right? That's just simply joules, okay? So this, if I were to find this answer, or this is just now energy, I'm going to get rid of the PE because I want to start to relate things to one another. All right, so let's just delete this. So I'm just going to call this E now. 1333 times whatever mass it is. Now, what I realize here is that, remember, power has the unit of joule per second. So in other words, what I can do, let me just erase the units here for now. Instead of calling it power, I could just simply call it energy per time. Isn't that right? Yeah, right? I can just call that energy per time. Now, think about this for a second. What I can then do is I realize that whatever this energy is being supplied by the potential energy drop right, of the water is going to be the energy that is then utilized here to create that amount of power from the uh, generator. So what I can now do is do the substitution, okay? So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to substitute. I'm going to do the 1333 M, all divided by then the time, equals now 2 times 10 to the ninth. Okay, now we're getting close here. Remember, they wanted us to find the water, uh, how many cubic meters per second. Now, what do we have here if we just get rid of this 1333? And by get rid of, I mean just cross multiply it on down here. We'll clean that up as well. Why don't we clean that up? All right, let's clean it up. And clean up, clean up, everybody, everywhere. Remember that song? I didn't think I'd ever hear that until I had children again. And uh, that, that, that was true. I did not hear it until I <laughs> um, Sorry, I'm trying to entertain myself at the same time while doing this. Uh, isn't this fun? Okay, so M over T. So this is going to be 1.5 times 10 to the 3, 4, 5, 6. All right, so I clean that up. We clean it up. Clean up. All right. For some reason, the song is great because it motivates them. They're like, oh, yeah, let's clean up. It's fun. It's a song. It's like, oh, thank God we tricked you into cleaning up. Oh, the mind games we play, right? The mind games we play with our children. <laughs> All right. Um, anyway, back to physics. So um, this this is the answer, by the way. Um, if the question we're asking, uh, how many how many kilograms per second? All right. That would have been the answer. But we don't want kilograms per second. We need uh, cubic meters per second. So what we have to do is we have to then look at the conversion, okay? So we have to have a conversion uh, value and we need to then use density. So the density here of water is equal to the mass divided by the volume, right? So if I wanna find the volume and that's what cubic meters is, then I have to do a cross multiplication. So in other words, the volume will equal the mass divided by the density. And I actually shouldn't have solved it that way, I just realized. Let's solve this for mass because I have to then substitute that on in, okay? So the mass here will be equal to uh, the density multiplied by the volume. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this now, whoop, and plug it on in, whoop. And now I realize that I have density times the volume all divided by time, and that's gonna be equal to 1.5 times 10 to the sixth. I gotta simply now take this density and move it on down, right? There we go. Oh, wait a minute, and there it is now. I got it. That's the formula. Look, the volume per time, that's what they wanted. Volume, cubic meters, we gotta be careful, right? We just gotta make sure we got right units. But per second, there it is. All I need to know is what now? All I need to know is the density, okay? So what is the density of water? The density of water is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. That is the density, right? So all I need to do is take the 1,000 and whoop, plug it on in, okay? So instead of writing D, since I'm running out of room, let's just erase it, and let's write now divided by 1,000, right? And these are the right units. Look, I need cubic meters per second. This will, is in uh, kilograms per cubic meter, and this value is in kilograms, so we will be uh, good to go. Oh, no, no, excuse me, that's not in kilograms. What the heck am I talking about? Um, what unit is that actually? So time, it's like a second or something. No, it's not a second. I don't know what it is. I'm lost. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Just plug it on. <laughs> just plug it on in. All right, so let's do it. So divide that by 1000. And this is just simply going to be 1.5 times 10 to the third or 1500 now 
and the units then will be, uh, how do I know? Well, because I know I used all standard units. That's the nice part, right? Cubic meters per second. Those are all the standard units. All right, so that's the volume. So we gotta be moving 1500 cubic meters per second. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it very much. Uh, please remember to help us out. And if you can subscribe, hit the like button, tell your friends, and we'll see you soon. Take care.